My name is Patrice Lanowitz. I have lost my confidence for justice before the Honorable James J. Guida. I believe my civil rights have been violated, due process has been denied to me, and judicial misconduct has taken place. Before I get started, I want to make a declaration. Society gives mothers a crazy mixed message. First it says to mothers, if your children's father is violent or abusive to you and your children, you should leave him in order to keep your children from being exposed to this behavior. But when the mother does have the courage to leave, our family courts say the opposite. We are taught through the process that since you have left your abusive partner, you must expose your children to him. Only now, you must send them alone without any complaints. In fact, since you have left your abuser, you now have limited, if any, rights to protect your children's safety, and the courts will see to it that you will see limited, if any, support to provide. It is unfathomable, yet a reality, that this is the message being sent to women in family court all across the country. I, um, I have so much to say. Just go through it. Just tell us, tell us broadly. Okay. Uh, I, I'm sorry. We'll edit. Sorry. Um, I was um, in a relationship with a domestic violence abuser for nearly 18 years. Um, it took me several attempts to leave my marriage. Um, and it was um, after one attempt to leave my ex, I was nearly killed when he tried to run me over with my vehicle. And um, as I laid on the ground with the wheel well of my Jeep Grand Cherokee next to my head, as he sideswiped the column that divides the parking garage in our home, um, he tried to pin me and, and run me over and I ran to the side and he took out the column. The whole car was damaged and I was looking at the tire on the floor. I knew that this was it. He was you know, going to try and kill me and um, I reconciled after that incident too. Um, it's known that many women, it takes several attempts, sometimes seven. Uh, attempts before you leave a domestic violent relationship. Um, I made the decision to leave for the last time after the abuse started being sh directed at our son. We had two children, two boys, and um, his abuse began on our oldest child. And um, after leaving no stone unturned on how to keep my family together, how to get counseling, how to heal um, these uh, wounds that he kept inflicting. I knew that I, as a mother, was teaching my children something. You can either be an abuser or you can be a victim. And when I got that message, I decided that was not okay. I did not want to participate in that education for my children and I wanted to give them an opportunity to see that it is not the way to be a man, that is not the way to be a father, that is not the way to be a human being by hurting other people. Um, when I fled the home I had a day to leave 18 years of my life because he was away with the children so I had a day to take anything I could before he came home because I was afraid of how he would react after the last time that I tried to leave the relationship, which was two years before that. Um, when he came home, I had the kids get in the car with me and um, we drove off before he realized that I took um, some of my belongings from the home. 
Uh, I had an attorney and um, took pictures of all the contents of our home, like advised by my attorneys, made a list of all the contents of the things in the home, and I chose to leave the home for the safety and well-being of my children because I knew if I stayed the, the abuse would escalate and I didn't want that for my sons. I, um, I really thought that in 2007 when um, I left the marital home that my sons and I had an opportunity to heal and live an abuse-free life. Um, we've been in family court now for five years. Uh, my ex has joint custody of our sons. Um, he still lives in the marital home, even though he's been ordered two court orders to sell the marital residence. He still has my belongings, even though two judges have um, required us to divide our marital contents. and. Um, I have, um, Dyfus has been involved with their children. There has been multiple occasions when they're with their father that they have been physically and psychologically harmed. And I have police reports to substantiate it, as well as a Dyfus investigation that concluded that he, the investigation was correct. He is accused of abuse and neglect of our son. Um, I have to say this, but toilet paper has a function. This substantiation by Dyfus has had no function. It does nothing. It means nothing. They've already found him guilty of harming our child, yet my children are still unprotected. In addition to that, at, the, at my divorce, um, child support and alimony was not set. I fled the marital home in December of 2007. I was divorced in 2008. Child support and alimony was not set. It was postponed because my ex was awaiting a criminal investigation. Um, he was being indicted and um, he was awaiting sentencing. So they divorced me without child support and alimony. Um, since that day, December 2008, it has been my burden to um, file motion after motion after motion to physically protect my children and financially support my children. Um, I have spent $204,000 to date um, on legal bills and um, I am virtually bankrupt. Um, my ex continues to live in our marital home, defying court orders to sell it. My ex still has all our belongings, furniture, my grandmother's china, our baby videos, pictures, my clothes, everything. Um, he's still in possession of that and, and um, is in contempt and um, nothing's been done to it. So it's been my burden to enforce my ex to pay support of his own children. And um, what I would love for the country to understand is that when the courts do not hold a parent accountable for um, providing for their family. But before I say that, I'd also like to mention that the lease that my ex made while we were together was $150,000 a year and the most he's made is $4 million in a year. I received $95 a week in child support after spending $204,000 in family court to protect my children and um, receive um, financial support. It became my burden to file motion and after motion after motion, um, some at $22,000 a shot to file a motion on something that should had already been in place at the time of my divorce in December of 2008. It is now um, 2012 and my boys are older and um, ha at times they don't see their father for up to seven months, no contact. 
yet I have $95 a week in which to provide for two boys. And my ex still lives in our marital home, and he still has all our stuff. Um, I have been denied the right to an abuse-free life by our family court system. Um, my children and I have been denied the right to safety. And I don't understand how in our country this is allowed to happen. But I do know for sure that domestic violence is a criminal matter. Violence against a stranger in the parking lot is considered a criminal matter. But if it was your partner or your spouse that harmed you, it's diminished to a family court matter where it becomes a he said, she said matter. And that is appalling. When you are a victim and you're suffering from abuse and you reach out for help, help should be there because we have laws in this country and our judges are supposed to uphold that law except certainly from where I'm coming from, it's been a lawless system, the family court system. There are no laws that are enforced. Certainly no laws are enforced to protect a mother who was a domestic violence survivor, who suffers with post-traumatic stress disorder and has a ADA accommodation, and a child who has a learning disability with organizational issues, who is forced to go between homes because the abuser, who is also a convicted criminal, has more rights or his rights are above ours. 